Hi, everyone. It's Elisa with AK Educational Consulting, and I'm back to continue on our journey of learning about mind-body skills. If you missed the first two videos, please go back and check them out. The first is an introduction to mind-body skills, and the second video um, begins our um, dive into each of the seven categories of mind-body skills. So today, we're going to look at category two, which is all about movement. So last time we talked about breathing and we talked a lot about co-regulation and how breathing exercises are a great um, way to kind of dabble in co-regulation strategies if this is something new to you. There's also just lots of great breathing exercises that we can teach our kids to help them learn self-regulation. Today, we're going to shift from breathing to movement. And really, a lot of the strategies that we will talk about in this video are also great um, co-regulation strategies. So when we're working with kids who are escalated um, and we're working on building up our kids' self-regulation muscles, one great way to do that is through this process of co-regulation where we are modeling the strategies for them, doing them with them rather than telling them what to do, rather than saying, you need to calm down and take some deep breaths right now. You can actually do it with them and show them and hope that your modeling kind of catches on, right? And there are different ways to sort of reel them into that. But today, we're going to talk more about moving our bodies. So keep in mind that not all of these strategies will feel good for all kids. They're not going to enjoy all of these. So we have to sort of figure out, help them figure out what feels right to them and what doesn't. So as we go through these, you're probably going to identify certain categories or certain strategies that you think, oh, I wouldn't use that to calm myself down. That's fine. That's what I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean that you're wrong or broken. That just means that that, that one's not for you. So you move on, you skip it, right? That's why it's important that we introduce kids to lots of strategies so they can figure out what does feel right to them. Okay, so movement. This can be as simple as taking a walk, right? Whether it's through the school building or outside, we can go for a walk. That's a great co-regulation strategy. During that walk, you're moving your body. You can also be doing some of the other strategies that we talk about. Um, anything that gets you moving or gets your body moving is a movement strategy. So um, if you are a teacher or you work in a school, you're probably familiar with sites like Go Noodle or Cosmic Kids Yoga or the Jack Hartman videos. Those are all movement based. Those are great. And those are used all the time, right? Um, some of those tend to be a little bit easier to use as a whole group with an entire class. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we need strategies that are going to work with just one student that, that we're working with. Um, you know, one student who's really angry about something or is just really escalated for some reason. Um, and so those may not lend themselves quite as well in that situation. Um, but there are so many other things that we can do, like clenching and releasing muscles. Um, this is one that I use a lot that I really like, and you can you can do this in a lot of different ways. I sometimes think about it like moving from my head to my toes. Um, and so you can sort of just move your neck around and then clench your shoulders and release. Clench and release. And now I'm doing the same thing with my biceps and my arms. I can do it with my fists. I can squeeze my legs. I can squeeze my toes and release. So we're clenching and releasing different parts of our body to kind of feel that tension and then let it go. Um, you can also do this where you're just sort of moving your body around and sort of, you know, 
getting some of the wiggles out. Um, that's sometimes referred to as a body scan where, again, we're moving head to toe if you choose. And you can sort of move your neck around, flutter your eyes, move your shoulders down to your arms, let your arms hang down, wiggle your hips a little bit, and you're just sort of moving and releasing everything um, from your head down to your toes. So that's one way of doing it. Movement can really be anything. If you are fortunate enough to have a sensory path in your building um, or somewhere nearby, some I've seen on the playground outside, you can do that, right? So it may have kids, you know, high-fiving the wall or doing wall push-ups and doing different, you know, hopscotch and jumping from one lily pad to the next. These are all different things that I've seen at different schools. Um, if you're not familiar with what a sensory path is, um, please Google that. There are, they're very cool. Um, and you will see exactly what I mean. But usually there are little decals that you can stick to the floor or the wall um, that guide kids through a series of movements. And it's just a great way, you know, to have, to get your class moving, get kids moving. Um, you can literally do the whole class as you're walking to music and you go through the sensory path and each kid does it. You can use it one-on-one -on -one with kids. Um, yoga moves are great. Uh, some schools have these up around their building, um, different yoga postures um, or poses up on the wall. So as you pass it, as you're walking to a special area class, um, the whole class stops and does a downward dog. The whole stop class stops and does a plank. Um, there are also neat little yoga pose cards that you can get um, that kids can use or you could use if you're working more one on one with kids. Um, anything that is just going to get kids moving. Um, if you're familiar with any sort of exercises um, that focus on crossing the midline, uh, those are great. You can actually Google, you know, different cr um, crossing the midline movements and get um, some neat ones where, you know, maybe you're going from top right down to bottom left and you can even, even put your legs out um, so you're going back and forth and kind of crossing that midline. Um, there are lots of movement games that you can play, but this type of, this category of mind-body skill is really just all about moving our body because for some people that is a great de-stressor. Um, one of the questions that I always ask when I'm working with schools is what do you do when you are feeling stressed out or overwhelmed or angry? And I guarantee in every school that I've ever asked this question, at least one person says, I go for a walk, or I walk the dog, or I go for a run, or I exercise. They mention some sort of exercise every single place I go for good reason. This is a go-to strategy for many of us. I know this is my go-to strategy, and it becomes very obvious when I haven't been able to move my body enough when I've been stuck at my desk or doing a lot of trainings um, and I haven't been able to get out and go for a run or go for a walk or lift weights, I can tell. And I it begins to impact my physical health and then shortly thereafter, my mental health. So this is a strategy that a lot of us are using. So we need to make sure we're introducing kids to this for a lot of good reasons, right? Um, this is, you know, a great way for them to get healthy. Um, there's so many benefits of, you know, these movement exercises. Um, so, so many others, and I hope that you will continue to join me for the rest of this journey, I believe we have five more categories to discuss. I'm also sharing a lot about mind-body skills over on my blog at www.akeducationalconsulting.com if you want to follow along over there as well. But until next time, I hope that you have a great day.